So welcome to day 24 of the Money Challenge. Again, we're going to be looking at debt. Our verse for the day is Ecclesiastes 5.10. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. Now, the way in which we view our finances deeply affects our spending habits. Now, I'm going to introduce to you today two accounting type ideas. So bear with me. If you don't like numbers, I understand entirely, but bear with me because it's important because you probably see your finances in one of two ways. Now, the first way and the way I think a lot of people look at their finances is what I call a cash flow model. What do I mean by this? Well, a cash flow model looks at what you've got coming in to your account every month and what you've got coming out of your account every month. So what do I earn? What do I spend? Um, and uh, you'll have seen on the email today, I've given you an example of a cash flow statement. So let's just take this in really broad terms. Let's say you earn £2,000 a month. Let's say you spend £1,000 of that on your housing, £250 on car repayments, £300 on food, and £400 on debt repayment. Now, I appreciate that having said this, you've probably not managed to do the sums in your head, but you've got 2,000 coming in and you're spending 1,950 pounds. Now, a lot of people would look at their finances and say, that's great, there's 50 pounds spare left over to spend or save as I like. I'm doing fine. And to be honest, the vast majority of people I speak to look at their finances in this way. They say, okay, how much money have I got coming in? How much do I spend each month? If you want to buy a new car, they say, okay, how much is it gonna cost me each month? How much have I got coming in? If I want to buy a new computer, I'll take a loan. I'll repay it over two years and I may pay interest on it. How much have I got coming in? How much do I have to spend on the computer loan repayments? Um, and the answer then is that anything that you need depends on how much money you've got coming in and how much you're spending in order and how much you need to fund those repayments. So looking at your finances via this cash flow statement um, is not a bad way of looking at it because it quickly sees whether or not your income and your outgoings are balanced or not. But really, looking at your finances in this way masks the true position. And I would, I would encourage you to look at your finances differently. I would encourage you to look at it on a balance sheet basis. So what do I mean by a balance sheet basis? Well, you list all of the things that you own, your assets as it's called, and then you list all of the things you owe. So the same person I just described who had 50 pounds left over each month on a cash flow basis, if you looked at it on a balance sheet basis, he would have, let's say, 200 pounds in cash in the bank, and he would have jewelry or some other asset worth 1,500 pounds. So he's got basically 1,700 pounds of assets, but he's got a bunch of liabilities. He may have credit cards of £5,000. Um, uh, he may have a car loan of £3,000. He may have interest-free loans of £2,000 and he could have bills of £300. So whilst um, he had a positive balance on the cash flow statement, if you look at it on a balance sheet basis, he has assets of £1,700 but liabilities of £10,300. And his position is actually far from healthy. It's actually really unhealthy. Now, there's loads of people who are earning massive amounts of money who are living on a cash flow basis and saying, I'm okay because I've got more income than I've got outgoings. 
But actually, when you stop and look at what they own and what they owe, they owe a lot more than what they own. When we only look at the cash flow basis, we have a distorted view of how our finances are because it hides the true picture of what you owe and what you own. And in order to assess your debt position, you need to change your mindset from cash flow to balance sheet. And it's really important that you take time to think properly about what your debts are and what you owe. And tomorrow we're gonna to look at this in a bit more detail. Because I think that one of the first steps for sorting out debt is really addressing how much you owe. Now, I'm sorry if this was an accounting type talk today. It wasn't meant to be. It's just meant to challenge the way you look at your finances. And I hope we've done that today. Let's pray. Lord, I, I ask for grace to identify and deal with my debts. I ask for your help every step of the way. Amen.